it is Pastor Jeremy checking in for our Wednesday night uh, devotion. I hope that you are doing well. Uh, if you'll notice, I don't want to brag too much, but I am starting to unpack my office. Um, those bobbleheads are not worth anything, but they are packed in their own little box and just takes a long time. And um, I'd like to get them all out, but it always seems like there's something else to do. So anyways, I worked on it for about two hours last week uh, with some other things that you can't see just yet. But uh, anyway, so we're getting there. Anyways, uh, this week, uh, I want to let you know uh, we have our special uh, church-wide Thanksgiving service this Sunday, and so I hope that you would be able to um, attend that. It's going to be a time for testimony and Thanksgiving celebration, meaning um, if we can help it, there won't be a sermon because we want to hear from you. Uh, we're going to ask everybody to keep it to about two minutes just so we can hear from a lot of different people, but we want to celebrate not just what God is doing uh, at the church, but through the church. Maybe there are things happening in your life that nobody knows about, but you want to just testify to God's faithfulness and provision in your life. And uh, I, I enjoy these services because you never know really what's going to be said. And we always leave so encouraged about things that, that God is doing. And it's a time for us to celebrate together. And then we celebrate after that with a good meal. And uh, I've learned that we really enjoy eating together. And so, duh, right? Um, but it, it's going to be good. Um, we have a couple of different cool opportunities coming up. Um, next Wednesday, there will be a uh, community dinner provided uh, through a partnership with the city of Williamsburg at the convention center. Uh, our own uh, Stephen Moses has helped organize this and um, they've asked for some volunteers. And so if you're able to help at the convention center next Wednesday, the 23rd from 9.30 until 1.30 during any real time during that, the meal begins at 10.30. But if there's a time that you can help serve, um, I know that they need volunteers and it's a way for us to serve people. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little guilty. I, you know, I think I've got four or five Thanksgiving meals um, just coming up in the next week. And so... We want to make sure we're taking time to serve if we're able. And so that is going on. Uh, with next week being the Thanksgiving Eve, uh, I do not know if there will be a Wednesday night devotion. And so just consider this um, uh, maybe our pause. If you've been following with our daily reading schedule, there will also be a break next week because we kind of actually got ahead of ourselves. And it's just kind of a long story. But we uh, are going to be back on the traditional narrative lectionary um, model and, and reading plan uh, with the Sunday of the 27th, which is Advent. I just can't believe it. Um, I don't know why calendars surprise us the way they do, but we will go from Thanksgiving into Advent very quickly this year. Sometimes there's a gap where you have a Sunday in between, but uh, after Thanksgiving service um, the next week, you should see our church decorated. It'll be the first time I've seen our sanctuary decorated for, for Christmas, and so it should be special. Tonight, uh, our devotion uh, finds us in 2 Kings chapter 22 uh, with the story of King Josiah. And so uh, I'm going to read, uh, just know that before King Josiah, I want to set this story up a little bit. Uh, you know, if we, we look at this whole story of scripture in the Old Testament, you know, God did not want to have his people ruled by a king. Um, they kept asking for a king and we had the period of the judges and you had all these opportunities where God's like, you really don't need a king. And they're like, no, Lord, we want a king. And so they, they finally gave, you know, King Saul and that was kind of a mess. And so then we had King David and he did a lot of good, but also some really bad. And then you had King Solomon, but it seemed to be that generally the Kings were not doing, uh, good in the eyes of the Lord. And so this plays into Israel's struggles and, and the, in these tribes. And then we see King, uh, Manasseh who is one of the longest tenured kings, is one of the most evil kings. And so um, they're, they're hearing the story and seeing all the evil that is happening. And there's a, a person in between uh, king, king Manasseh and King Josiah. Uh, but we just know that uh, this kingship model is not something that God had desired. And he had kind of given in and it caused a lot of mess. And so uh, there was just struggle after struggle after struggle for God's people and their leadership was corrupt. But we're going to read about King Josiah, who... Uh, was a good king. And so uh, we are in 2 Kings chapter 22, uh, verses 1. I think it's through verse 1 through 13. We'll just see a good stopping point. But it says, Josiah was eight years old when he became king and reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. His mother name was Jedidah, daughter of Adiah. She was from Bozkath. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed completely in the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the 18th year of his ring, 
reigned, King Josiah sent the secretary, Shaphan, son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam. See, I didn't practice these, if you can't tell, uh, to the temple of the Lord. He said, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, and have him get ready the money that has been brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers have collected from the people. Have them entrust it to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple, and have these men pay the workers who repair the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. Also have them purchase timber and dressed stone to repair the temple. But they need not account for the money entrusted to them, because they are honest in their dealings. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan who read it. Then Shaphan the secretary went to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read, read it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the secretary, and Isaiah, the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for all the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been, get, that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. So we have King Josiah says he takes over at the age of eight. And so that's um, a pretty uh, young age to take on such responsibility. Uh, but King Josiah is known as the king who did it right in the eyes of the Lord. Um, this is not ascribed to any other. You know, David was a man after God's own heart. But Josiah was the king who ruled in the way that God desired the most. It's hard being in a position of leadership because imagine for these kings, they, they probably felt like they didn't need the Lord. And so the temple had fallen into disrepair and people had no longer been reading God's law, even though this covenant had been extended to them. As these leaders got further and further removed from the story, they did not see the need to honor those commitments and those covenants. And they probably felt that they were able to handle it on their own, but not Josiah. We see that Josiah works to have the temple rebuilt, and in the process of working on this temple, they rediscover this law of the Lord, and there's not sure exactly which text um, they're reading. Some suspect that maybe they found parts of Deuteronomy. Uh, but you start to hear about God's provision, and it is a reminder, and it is maybe new information for Josiah about what this actually means for his people. Uh, there are some who say that this is one of the first times that we see uh, the, the scriptures being used in a way that maybe we would use the Bible today. It wasn't just this oral tradition, but you're finding people who were removed from these conversations with God, these times when maybe they felt distant, but now they are referring to this scripture. And it is Josiah who realizes that all the folks that had gone before him were not holding up to their end of the bargain. In the midst of all this tragedy, and heartache that they had seen, we find Josiah to be a bright spot because he wanted to honor this commitment. And he was convinced that the best way to rule his people and the best thing for his people would be to return to these laws and commands that were given to them by God. It seems like a great story. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much if you're following in the daily reading, but if we follow in the story of Josiah and because we, we know the story of the Old Testament, uh, for Josiah, things are going to go really well, but this is a brief moment of goodness in the midst of a really dark period for God's people. If you continue reading in chapter 22, the message is actually that, honestly, and this is my paraphrase, but things have just gotten so bad that the, the evil has already, the consequences have started to play out. And so under Josiah, they are going to experience maybe this, this respite, this bit brief of, of time when maybe things don't seem so bad. But in the larger story, not the largest story, but in the larger story, we see that there is still going to be destruction because simply they had done so many bad things. But Josiah is promised that he will be buried in peace. Sometimes when we feel like the world is chaotic, which seems to be just about all the time these days, uh, we wonder what good it does to, um, to follow what is right. 
But it is important to see people like Josiah who were able to transform the lives of those that were under his care, if even only for a brief couple of years, 30-something years or whatever it is that we read. But because of his faithfulness, because of his desire to honor God and return to their covenant, there was this time of peace and there was this time when all in the world did not seem lost. Sometimes when we read the story, uh, people think that, well, the Josiah in our day must be the government. If we could get the government to follow our religious laws, if we could get people to the government to turn back to the Bible, then everything would go right. But really, when we read this story, we shouldn't read it as government. We should be looking at it as the church folks. When we look at our lives, do we see evidence of people who are wanting to get back to what God has called us to be? Now, we all say yes. I, I've, never met a, I've never met a church that didn't say, well, tell me about church. Well, we're friendly, people say. We're a friendly church, and uh, we do what the Bible says. And if you've heard me for any length of time, I hate that language because we are trying to do what God says. But if we were to look back on our stories, we would probably find that at times we are still not living up to what God has desired for us. It is something that we aspire to. Now, I love this church. I think that there are wonderful things happening in Williamsburg. And so I don't say this to say, like, well, man, our whole history is bad and it's time we bring back ourselves to the Lord. But I think that there is a time for healthy uh, reflection where we say, are we living up to this? And the answer may be yes. It may be that we say, you know what, we are people who serve and we are people who worship. We are people who are fair in our dealings. And if that's the case, then hallelujah. But we must constantly be watching to make sure that we are not leaning on our own abilities, that we are not leaning on our own strength, that we are not getting uh, into a position maybe like the kings prior who had everything they needed and so they forgot they needed to rely on God. But instead, we should have this model of Josiah where it says that we want to get back to the basics. There was a worship song for uh, many years that people would go to. It's, I'm getting back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. The prophet Amos we talked about last week says, I hate all your shows and I hate all the, the hypocrisy of your festivals and your conventions and everything that you're doing. And what do I desire? I desire um, a flood of justice. We are encouraged to make sure that consistently we are getting back to the core of Scripture, that we are loving God and that we are loving our neighbors. And the way that we make sure that we are loving our nature, neighbors is that we go back and the way that we're loving God is that we read the scriptures and we spend time making sure not that we're following all the rules, but that we are embracing a lifestyle that is greater than anything we could come up with on our own. When we live our lives, we want to make sure that the world is blessed because of it, that other people experience God's goodness because we have gotten to the core of what scripture has taught us to be. I feel like I get repetitive, and it's hard maybe to get out of my own brain, but no matter where we are in Scripture, it seems to be the same. The world is chaotic. We have a chance to do right. We sometimes choose rebellion, but through it all, God remains faithful. For Josiah, it was a brief moment of goodness, and he was able to live his life and be buried in peace, even though eventually things would not work out. Sometimes we read scripture that talks and people are worried about the end days and we brought the end times and how the world keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And you know what? It very well may be true that the world continues to spiral. But at the same time, we have an opportunity to be a light in the midst of darkness. Our challenge when we read this story is to simply be a light where we can. Josiah could not control the fate of generations after generations after generations, but what he could control was on this particular day, in this particular place, would his people turn their eyes back to the Lord. If every morning we can wake up and we can make that commitment, if we can honor our, our, our God and through our lives and the way that we treat others, then we're going to see the world is a better place because of it. We honor our moments, trusting that the smallest things in the, in the course of history can often make the biggest difference. This may have just been that little bit of revival that they needed to help them push through because there would be a, a period of captivity. There would be this Babylonian exile and there would be this longing. And then there would be this 400 year period of darkness between the Old Testament and the New Testament that they were longing and waiting for this Messiah to come. Perhaps. It was the faithfulness of Josiah that helped them remember in the midst of the hardship, hardships, maybe there was something more to this. 
It is a joy to be with you. Um, it is a joy to be in Williamsburg. We are looking forward to the, the weeks to come in this holiday season. Uh, we hope that if you do not have a church home, that you would consider worshiping with us. But wherever you worship and however we worship, we just want to make sure that we keep Christ at the center of all things. So have a great week. Uh, I'm looking forward to Sunday and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And uh, we will talk soon. Have a great week.